This is the uh, fourth out of five short videos on some overlooked aspects in uh, Christian living. This is called The Proper Focus, The Secret to Growth and Defeating Our Sin. It's based on Colossians 3 verses 1 to 4. Paul writes, Since then you have been raised with Christ. Set your hearts on things above, where Christ is, seated at the right hand of God. Set your minds on things above, not on earthly things. For you died, and your life is now hidden with Christ in God. When Christ, who is your life, appears, then you also will appear with him in glory. First, a little bit of background to this passage. In chapters 1 to 2 of Colossians, Paul has been writing to the Colossian church, warning them not to get sucked in by false teachers. These were probably Judaizers who were arguing that faith in Christ was just not enough and that Christians needed Christ plus. Or in other words, they were arguing that Christians needed to add on lots and lots of religious practices on top and that the way to control and overcome personal sin was to just simply do more religion. Uh, they would suggest things like festivals, um, circumcision, food laws, asceticism as the means of growth and the means of defeating and battling sin. But Paul writes at the end of chapter 2, verse 23, that religious practices by themselves cannot restrain personal sin nor lead to growth. And then after these verses on the screen in front of you, <coughs> there also uh, comes verses 5 onwards, which again pick up the theme about putting sinful practices to death. So really this passage is about how to grow as a Christian and how to defeat and overcome personal uh, sins. And the people to whom Paul was writing were feeling a bit wobbly. They were wondering, is faith in Christ enough? Is a focus upon Jesus all that I need? Because the synagogue down the road seems to be suggesting to me that I need to be adding on lots of other things and having Christ plus a whole load of other religious practices. Paul tells them in verse 1, he says, set your hearts on things above. And in verse 2, on the screen there, he says, set your minds on things that are above, not on things that are on the earth. Now, the word things is actually, he's actually talking about focusing on Christ himself, not really on heaven, th heavenly things as such. It's linked to the phrase, where Christ is, which is found in verse 1. And he is really referring to anything that flows out of a relationship with Christ. And it is a call to focus on the risen, reigning Jesus. Uh, they now have a relationship with Christ. And Paul calls them to develop this relationship, to pursue vigorously Christ and a deeper knowledge of Christ himself. As they focus on Christ, Christians will see what Christ has achieved for them in the past. It says that you died. And also in verse 1, he says, you have been raised with Christ. Uh, that means they have been joined spiritually with Christ's death and resurrection. What Christ underwent in the past, they also underwent. And as they focus on Christ, Christians will also see where God has put them now, in the present. He says in this verse uh, that your life is now, that's now, hidden with Christ in God. And if they are hidden uh, with the seated Christ, that is surely where their focus must now be. Where Christ is now in the present, they are now in the present. So we've got past, present, and we've also got future. As Christians focus on Christ, they will see that where they are going to be one day in the future. They will appear with him in glory at his future appearing. They are to focus on Christ whilst waiting for his appearing. Where Christ is going to be, they are going to be.
So Christians who have been hidden with Christ must seek Christ above whilst waiting for his appearing. It's a bit like the three-legged uh, sports race. For those of you who used to do sports day at school, you may have done a three-legged sports race where you, you had one leg tied to the leg of another person uh, who ran with you. And you were basically where they went, you went. Uh, where one partner goes, the other inevitably goes. And this is a bit like uh, Christ. You see, Christ died and we died with him. Christ rose and we rose with him. Christ is seated in heaven and in a sense we are already seated in heaven. It's quite amazing that a Christian actually uh, dies in this life before they physically die. Uh, a Christian is raised up uh, to a new life uh, in this life before they actually get to the actual day of physical resurrection and in another sense Christians are already in heaven although still on this earth before they actually get to the uh, complete fulfillment of heaven so where Christ went uh, we have gone uh, spiritually and we are therefore to focus on the one to whom we are tied and united Paul's aim in writing Colossians 3 verses 1 to 4, his pastoral aim was so that they would focus on the seated victorious Christ as the only way to grow as Christians and to fight sin. As I said earlier, the Jewish false teachers were telling them you need to do lots of religious practices, you need to uh, follow various laws and various things if you want to battle sin and if you want to grow. Whereas Paul is saying, no, what you need to do is to focus on the seated, victorious Christ, as this is the only way to grow uh, as a Christian and to defeat sin. Now, uh, it's very key that it talks about Christ uh, being seated. You see, being seated at the right hand of God, uh, as it says there, seated uh, at the right hand of God is a place of honour. It is also a place of great power. So Christ has the power to help us uh, in our battle against sin and in our growth. And also it reminds us of when Jesus sat down after completing the work of paying for our sins. Uh, like the high priest who offered up himself, he finally sat down as a sign of absolute completion uh, through Jesus. So we are called to focus and develop and pursue a relationship with Jesus uh, as the secret to power in overcoming sin and in the means to grow as saints. So the question is, how do we practically uh, focus our hearts and minds on Christ? Uh, well, I learned that um, Trying to beat certain sins in my own life was impossible uh, in my own strength by trying harder uh, by a severe regime. I once even tried to keep a calendar and by force of will and abstinence to stop committing certain sins uh, and I would try and keep that up. But my own rule and resolution failed. I did later discover the secret and this was to cry out to God and to develop a relationship with the Lord who is seated in the place of power. And then the addiction was broken. I began to pursue a closer relationship, uh, seeking Jesus who reigns above. How do we practically do this? Well, the simple answer is through praying and reading. Um, but I'm not merely advocating reading and praying as religious practices by themselves, but as a means or a vehicle for developing our pursuit of a relationship with Christ. Um, the Christ is seated uh, and victorious uh, in the place of power and as we seek his face uh, in scripture, through regular scripture and regular prayer, uh, maybe by going for a prayer walk, uh, you will find that your focus is turned upward onto him. Um, it's a very basic formula praying and reading. Uh, obviously when you pray that also involves listening and obeying whatever the Lord shows you, not just reeling off shopping lists. Um, 
I remember an old uh, pastor friend of mine once said that he believed that in 50% of all the counselling cases he dealt with, the issue was usually resolved when people simply went back to reading their Bible and praying, as it focused their heart back onto Christ, who is the source of power. Praying and reading uh, should lead us to a place of worship. Uh, A.W. Tozer says that the missing jewel in much of evangelicalism is the jewel of worship. And by worship, he means to feel in the heart. And he says that a person that merely goes through the form but does not feel anything is not worshipping. The jewel of worship. Uh, when the Holy Spirit shows us God as he is, we will admire him to the point of wonder and delight. Tozer says that true worship involves admiration, fascination, and filled, being filled and captivated and charmed and entranced with who God is, and struck with astonished wonder at the splendour of Almighty God. It will lead to adoration where we love God with all the power within us, and we love God with fear and wonder and yearning and awe. Uh, Tozer goes on to say that uh, often the God in many churches rarely astonishes anyone. Um, he is a very well behaved God, and very denominational and very much one of us. Um, uh, but, but Tozer seems to say that we can break beyond that and come to a place of absolute worship and, and love for the Lord. He says that there is a terrible disease in some churches, and that is that we do not see God as great as he is, and that we become too familiar with God. But God wants us to be aglow uh, with personal love for Christ. So let us follow the advice given in Colossians 3 verses 1 to 4 to focus on the risen reigning Jesus, seek him through praying and reading and come to a place of worship for this is the secret to growth as a Christian and to overcoming personal sin. We are called to an everlasting preoccupation with the risen Christ. The Lord bless you and encourage you. May the Lord help all of us to grow in a radiant love for Christ.